What is the Big Bang Theory? It is a theory of the origin of the universe. According to the Big Bang Theory, the universe began as the result of an explosion that occurred between 15 and 20 billion years ago. Over time, the matter created in the Big Bang broke apart, forming galaxies, stars, and a group of planets we know as the Solar System. The theory was first put forth by Edwin Hubble, 1889-1953, who observed that the universe is expanding uniformly and objects that are greater distances are receding at greater velocities. In the 1960s Bell Telephone Laboratory scientists discovered weak radio waves that are believed to be all that remains of the radiation from the original fireball. The discovery further supported Hubble's theory, which puts the age of the universe between 15 and 20 billion years. Astronomers have observed that the galaxies are still moving away from each other and that they'll probably continue to do so forever or at least for about the next 70 billion years. If the galaxies did come together again, scientists believe that all of the matter in the universe would explode again. In other words, there would be another Big Bang. And the result would be consistent with that of the first it would produce a universe much like the one people live in today. Another supporter of the Big Bang Theory is British theoretical scientist Stephen Hawking, 1942. In 1988 Hawking, who is known for his theories on black holes, gravitational forces in space, made by what were once stars, published his ideas in the best-selling book A Brief History of Time, From the Big Bang to Black Holes. What is the Doomsday Clock? The clock represents the threat of nuclear annihilation. It was created by the Board of Directors of Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists and first appeared on the cover of that magazine in 1947 two years after the United States had used two nuclear weapons against Japan. At Hiroshima and Nagasaki, to end World War II, 1939-45. The atomic scientists developed the idea in order to illustrate the threat of total destruction posed by nuclear weapons. On the clock, midnight is the time of destruction. When the clock first appeared, the scientists had set the time at seven minutes before midnight. In the decades since, the clock had been adjusted based on the proliferation of or agreements to limit nuclear weapons. The closest it ever came to doomsday was two minutes until midnight. This was in 1953, shortly after the United States and the Soviet Union each tested hydrogen bombs. The farthest the minute hand has ever been from striking the hour of midnight was in 1991, when the United States and the Soviet Union signed the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty start, and announced cuts in nuclear weapons. The scientists moved the clock to read 17 minutes until midnight. In the late 1990s the clock read 14 minutes to midnight. 
but the 1998 testing of nuclear weapons in Pakistan and India, neighboring countries long at odds with each other, resulted in the clock being forwarded to nine minutes before midnight. In 2002 the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists informed the world that the clock had been adjusted to seven minutes to midnight, saying that not only had little progress been made on global nuclear disarmament, but the United States had rejected a series of arms control treaties and announced that it would withdraw from the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. Further, terrorists sought to acquire and use nuclear and biological weapons. All of this added up to a greater threat of nuclear annihilation. Why was the development of the quantum theory important? German physicist and professor Max Planck, 1858-1947, originated and developed the quantum theory. From 1900, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1918. The basic theory is that energy and some other physical properties can exist in tiny, finite amounts, called quanta. Before Planck's work, theories of classical physics held that energy and physical properties varied continuously. Planck experimented with black body radiation. A black body is any substance that absorbs all of the radiant energy that falls on it, reflecting none of it. He concluded that radiant energy can be divided, and the particles, quanta, would have values proportional to those of the energy source. Planck determined the relationship between the amount of energy that light has and its frequency. Along with Albert Einstein's, 1897-1955, theory of relativity. The quantum theory forms the basis of modern physics. Since it was developed, the quantum theory has been applied to numerous processes involving the transfer of energy in an atomic or molecular scale, including in 1913 when it was used by Danish physicist and Nobel laureate, 1922, Niels Bohr, 1885-1962, to explain atomic structure. The theory has been used to explain how electrons move though the chips in a personal computer, the decay of nuclei, and how lasers work. Who invented the airship? The airship, a lighter-than-air aircraft that has both propulsion, power, and steering systems, had a long evolution. The first successful power-driven airship was built by French engineer Henry Gifford. 1825 to 1882, who in September 1852 flew his craft a distance of 17 miles from Paris to Traps, France, at an average speed of 5 miles per hour. The airship was cigar-shaped with a gondola that supported a three-horsepower steam engine. Though it included a rudder, the craft proved difficult to steer. Austrian David Swartz, 1845-1897, is credited with designing the first truly rigid airship. 
a craft that he piloted unsuccessfully in November 1897, the airship crashed. The inventor whose name is most often associated with airships, also called dirigibles after 1885, is Ferdinand von Zeppelin. 1838-1917, who designed, built, and flew the first successful rigid airship in 1900. The Zeppelin As the aircraft came to be known, flew at a top speed of about 17 miles per hour. The German aeronaut steadily improved his craft in the years that followed and in 1906 set up a manufacturing plant where the Zeppelins were built. In 1909 Zeppelin helped establish the world's first commercial airline. The transport was wholly via airship. The craft saw military use during World War I, 1914-18. But after the Hindenburg crashed on landing in New Jersey in 1937, the airships declined dramatically in use. Their decline largely paralleled advances in the development of airplanes. Did the Wright brothers invent the airplane? The Wright brothers were the first to successfully build and fly an airplane. And both events went virtually unnoticed at the time. The owners of a bicycle shop in their hometown of Dayton, Ohio, Wilbur. 1867-1912, and Orville, 1871-1948, Wright were interested in mechanics from early ages. After attending high school, the brothers went into business together and interested in aviation, began tinkering with gliders in their spare time. The brothers consulted national weather reports to determine the most advantageous spot for conducting flying experiments. Based on this data, they concluded it was Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. There in 1900 and 1901, on a narrow strip of sand called Kill Devil Hills. They tested their first gliders that could carry a person. Back at their bicycle shop in Ohio, they constructed a small wind tunnel, about six feet in length in which they ran experiments using wing models to determine air pressure. As a result of this research, the Wright brothers were the first to write accurate tables of air pressures on curved surfaces. Based on their successful glider flights and armed with their new knowledge of air pressure, Orville and Wilbur Wright designed and built an airplane. The return to Kitty Hawk in September 1903 to try the craft. But weather prevented them from doing so until December. It was days before Christmas when, on December 17, 1903, the Wright brothers made the world's first flight in a power driven, heavier than air machine. Orville piloted the craft a distance of 120 feet and stayed in the air 12 seconds. They made a total of four flights that day, and Wilbur made the longest. 59 seconds of flight time that covered just more than 850 feet. It was not a news event, the brothers had witnesses, a few spectators on the beach in North Carolina and there were a handful of newspaper accounts of the Wrights' marvelous feat, but some were inaccurate. 
After they made a public announcement in January 1904, Popular Science Monthly published a report. In March, as did another magazine. Other than these scant notices, the Wrights received no attention for their accomplishments. Many were trying to do what the Wrights had done. But the public was skeptical that any heavier than air man made machine could take flight. The doubt played a role in the lack of acclaim. Meanwhile, the brothers continued their experiments at a field near Dayton. In 1904 and 1905 they made 105 flights, but totaled only 45 minutes in the air. The Wright brothers persisted, and in spite of public skepticism, which initially included that of the U.S. government. In 1908 Orville and Wilbur Wright signed a contract with the Department of War to build the first military airplane. Only then did they receive the media attention they deserved. A year later, they set up the American Wright Company to manufacture airplanes. In spring 1912 Wilbur became sick and died. Three years later Orville sold his share in the company and retired. The plane piloted by the two brothers in December 1903 near Kitty Hawk is on display at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Who was Dorothea Dix? Dorothea Lindy Dix, 1802-1887 Was a philanthropist and among the first American women to become active in social reform. Having been headmistress of her own school for girls in Boston from 1821 to 1836, in 1841 Dix toured Massachusetts State Correctional Institutions, where she was shocked to see deplorable treatment of the mentally ill. Thereafter Dix became an impassioned advocate for the mentally ill, leading a drive to build hospitals for the specialized care of those afflicted with mental illnesses. Dix appealed to the consciences of legislators and philanthropists. She was successful in establishing mental hospitals throughout the United States, Canada, and Europe, many of which still bear her name. Dix's campaign for humane treatment of the mentally ill transformed American attitudes and institutions in the two decades that led up to the Civil War, 1861-65. During the war she acted as superintendent of the U.S. Army nurses. She also worked to improve prison conditions during her lifetime. When was AIDS first diagnosed? The first AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Cases were identified in 1981 by physicians in Los Angeles and New York City. Since that time researchers traced possible cases of the disease back to 1969. The human immunodeficiency virus. HIV, which severely damages the body's ability to fight disease. Is transmitted through sexual contact, shared drug needles, and infected blood transfusions. 
while the disease was believed to have been transmitted somehow to humans from monkeys. Since research shows HIV to be similar to simian immunodeficiency viruses, HIV has never been isolated in any wild animal. While the source of the deadly disease has not been definitively determined, Scientists believe that infection began in Africa during the 1960s and 1970s when significant numbers of people migrated from rural areas to cities. The overcrowding and unemployment that resulted contributed to the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. AIDS is now considered endemic to many developing nations where it is spread mostly among heterosexual men and women. In developed nations, education programs have made the public aware of how the disease is transmitted, helping curb the spread of HIV. Drug treatments are still being developed to treat HIV AIDS, no cure has been discovered. A 2004 report from the United Nations stated that there were 38 million people living with HIV in the world. Almost 70% of them in Sub-Saharan Africa. The same report states that more than 20 million people had died since the first cases were identified in 1981. Why are Pavlov's dogs well known? Russian physiologist Ivan Pavlov, 1849-1936, carried out famous experiments with dogs, which were intended to demonstrate conditioned reflex. Noticing that the laboratory dogs would sometimes salivate merely at the approach of the lab assistants who fed them. Pavlov, who was already a Nobel laureate for his research on digestion, set out to determine whether he could turn normally unconditioned reflexes or responses of the central nervous system into conditioned reflexes. He demonstrated that if a bell is rung every time a dog is fed, eventually the dog becomes conditioned to salivate at the sound of a bell, even if there is no food present. In this way, Pavlov substituted artificial stimulus, the ringing of the bell, for natural or environmental stimulus, food, to prompt a physiological reaction, salivation based on these experiments Pavlov concluded that all acquired habits depend on chains of conditioned reflexes this conclusion contributed to the development of behaviorism Who invented the television? The television, which may seem to many to be a decidedly American invention, was actually the outcome of a series of inventions by a cast of international characters. As early as 1872 British engineer Willoughby Smith, 1828-1891, inspired by an experiment on selenium rods, imagined a system of visual telegraphy. Five years later, the tube technology that would make television possible was Developed in Strasbourg by German physicist Karl Ferdinand Braun, 1850-1918. He invented a cathode ray tube, also known as the Braun tube. 
which improved the Marconi wireless, radio, technology by increasing the energy of sending stations. And arranged antennas to control the direction of radiation. In 1907 Russian physicist Boris Rosing proposed using bronze tube to receive images something he called electric vision. One year later, Alan Campbell Swinton, 1863-1930 suggested using the cathode ray tube to both receive and transmit images. That same year, the idea of using cathode ray tubes to scan images for the purpose of television was published, and by 1912 it was being worked on by Rosing and his former pupil. Vladimir Zwerikin, 1889-1982, in Russia. In 1923 a competing technology, which was entirely mechanical reached an early milestone when British inventor John Logie Baird, 1888-1946, demonstrated an electrified hatbox with discs, which constituted the world's first working television set. But the race was still on and in that same year, Zwerikin, who had moved to the United States in 1919 and was hired by Westinghouse Electronic Corporation, in 1920. Advanced the tube-based technology when he patented the iconoscope, which would become the television camera. In 1929's Zwerikin, now a U.S. citizen, invented the Kinescope, television tube. Zwerikin's inventions together comprised the first electronic television. Regularly scheduled U.S. television began on April 30, 1939, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt, 1882-1945, opened the New York World's Fair, billed as the World of Tomorrow. Giving a speech that was the first televised presidential talk. The National Broadcasting Companies, NBC, coverage of the fair's opening initiated its weekly television scheduling. A victory for parent company RCA, whose president, David Sarnoff, 1891-1971, founded NBC and is considered a broadcasting pioneer. Who invented the television? The television, which may seem to many to be a decidedly American invention was actually the outcome of a series of inventions by a cast of international characters. As early as 1872 British engineer Willoughby Smith, 1828-1891, inspired by an experiment on selenium rods, imagined a system of visual telegraphy. Five years later, the tube technology that would make television possible was developed in Strasbourg by German physicist Karl Ferdinand Braun, 1850-1918. He invented a cathode ray tube, also known as the Braun tube, which improved the Marconi wireless, radio, technology by increasing the energy of sending stations and arranged antennas to control the direction of radiation. In 1907 Russian physicist Boris Rosing proposed using bronze tube to receive images something he called electric vision. One year later, Alan Campbell Swinton, 1863-1930 
suggested using the cathode ray tube to both receive and transmit images. That same year, the idea of using cathode ray tubes to scan images for the purpose of television was published, and by 1912 it was being worked on by Rosing and his former pupil. Vladimir Zwerikin, 1889-1982, in Russia. In 1923 a competing technology, which was entirely mechanical. Reached an early milestone when British inventor John Logie Baird, 1888-1946, demonstrated an electrified hat box with discs. Which constituted the world's first working television set. But the race was still on and in that same year, Zwerikin. Who had moved to the United States in 1919 and was hired by Westinghouse Electronic Corporation, in 1920. Advanced the tube based technology when he patented the iconoscope, which would become the television camera. In 1929's Wurrican. Now a U.S. citizen, invented the Kinescope, television tube. Zwerikin's inventions together comprised the first electronic television. Regularly scheduled U.S. television began on April 30, 1939, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt, 1882-1945, opened the New York World's Fair, billed as the World of Tomorrow. Giving a speech that was the first televised presidential talk. The National Broadcasting Company's NBC coverage of the fair's opening initiated its weekly television scheduling. A victory for parent company RCA, whose president, David Sarnoff, 1891 to 1971, founded NBC and is considered a broadcasting pioneer. When was color television invented? In 1940 Hungarian-American engineer Peter Karl Goldmark, 1906-1977. The head of the Columbia Broadcasting Systems, CBS, Research and Development Laboratory. Came up with a technology that broke down the television image into three primary colors through a set of Spinning filters in front of black and white causing the video to be viewed in color. His system gave way in the 1950s to an RCA system whose signals were compatible with conventional black and white TV signals. In September 1962 American Broadcasting Corporation, ABC began color telecasts for three and a half hours a week. By this time, competitor National Broadcasting Corporation, NBC, was broadcasting 68% of its prime time programming in color. While CBS had opted to confine itself to black and white after having transmitted in color earlier. By 1967 all three networks were broadcasting entirely in color. It was not until 1967 that color television was broadcast in England. On July 1 the BBC Two transmitted seven hours of programming, most of it coverage of lawn tennis from Wimbledon. When was color television invented?
In 1940 Hungarian-American engineer Peter Karl Goldmark, 1906-1977. The head of the Columbia Broadcasting Systems, CBS, Research and Development Laboratory. Came up with a technology that broke down the television image into three primary colors through a set of spinning filters in front of black and white, causing the video to be viewed in color. His system gave way in the 1950s to an RCA system whose signals were compatible with conventional black and white TV signals. In September 1962 American Broadcasting Corporation, ABC began color telecasts, for three and a half hours a week. By this time, competitor National Broadcasting Corporation, NBC, was broadcasting 68% of its primetime programming in color. While CBS had opted to confine itself to black and white after having transmitted in color earlier, by 1967 all three networks were broadcasting entirely in color. It was not until 1967 that color television was broadcast in England. On July 1 the BBC2 transmitted seven hours of programming, most of it coverage of lawn tennis from Wimbledon. When was the first fax machine developed? The fax, facsimile, machine may seem like a recent invention. But it was developed long ago it took more than 100 years for the machines to become part of everyday life. In 1842-1843 Scottish philosopher and psychologist Alexander Bain 1818-1903, invented the first, albeit crude, fax machine. The scanning technology was improved enough by 1924 that newspapers began using the device to transmit photographs. By the 1930s wire photos were an important component of newspaper reports. It was not until the 1980s that faxes came into widespread use. As manufacturers produced the more compact and affordable machines that are visible in most every place of business today. When was the first fax machine developed? The fax, facsimile, machine may seem like a recent invention. But it was developed long ago it took more than 100 years for the machines to become part of everyday life. In 1842-1843 Scottish philosopher and psychologist Alexander Bain 1818-1903, invented the first, albeit crude, fax machine. The scanning technology was improved enough by 1924 that newspapers began using the device to transmit photographs. By the 1930s wire photos were an important component of newspaper reports. It was not until the 1980s that faxes came into widespread use. As manufacturers produced the more compact and affordable machines that are visible in most every place of business today. Who invented the computer?
English mathematician Charles Babbage, 1792-1871, is recognized as the first to conceptualize the computer. He worked to develop a mechanical computing machine called the analytical engine, which is considered the prototype of the digital computer. While attending Cambridge University in 1812, Babbage conceived of the idea of a machine that could calculate data faster than could humans and without human error. These were the early years of the Industrial Revolution. And the world Babbage lived in was growing increasingly complex. Human errors in mathematical tables posed serious problems for many burgeoning industries. After graduating from Cambridge, Babbage returned to the idea of a computational aid. He spent the rest of his life and much of his fortune trying to build such a machine. But he was not to finish. Nevertheless, Babbage's never completed analytical engine, on which he began work in 1834, was the forerunner of the modern digital computer. A programmable electronic device that stores, retrieves, and processes data. Babbage's device used punch cards to store data and was intended to print answers. More than 100 years later, the first fully automatic calculator was invented. Development began in 1939 at Harvard University. Under the direction of mathematician Howard Aiken, 1900 to 1973, the first electronic digital computer, called Mark I, was invented in 1944. The Mark II followed in 1947. In 1946, scientists at the University of Pennsylvania completed ENIAC. Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator, the first all-purpose electronic digital computer. Operating on 18,000 vacuum tubes, NIAC was large. Required great deal of power to run, and generated a lot of heat. The first computer to handle both numeric and alphabetical data with equal facility was the UNIVAC. Universal Automatic Computer, developed between 1946 and 1951, also at the University of Pennsylvania. Who invented the computer? English mathematician Charles Babbage, 1792-1871, is recognized as the first to conceptualize the computer. He worked to develop a mechanical computing machine called the analytical engine, which is considered the prototype of the digital computer. While attending Cambridge University in 1812, Babbage conceived of the idea of a machine that could calculate data faster than could humans and without human error. These were the early years of the Industrial Revolution. And the world Babbage lived in was growing increasingly complex. Human errors in mathematical tables posed serious problems for many burgeoning industries. After graduating from Cambridge, Babbage returned to the idea of a computational aid. He spent the rest of his life and much of his fortune trying to build such a machine. But he was not to finish. Nevertheless, Babbage's never completed analytical engine, on which he began work in 1834, 
was the forerunner of the modern digital computer. A programmable electronic device that stores, retrieves, and processes data. Babbage's device used punch cards to store data and was intended to print answers. More than 100 years later, the first fully automatic calculator was invented. Development began in 1939 at Harvard University. Under the direction of mathematician Howard Aiken, 1900 to 1973, the first electronic digital computer called Mark I, was invented in 1944. The Mark II followed in 1947. In 1946 scientists at the University of Pennsylvania completed NIAC. Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator, the first all-purpose electronic digital computer. Operating on 18,000 vacuum tubes, NIAC was large. Required great deal of power to run, and generated a lot of heat. The first computer to handle both numeric and alphabetical data with equal facility was the UNIVAC. Universal Automatic Computer, developed between 1946 and 1951, also at the University of Pennsylvania. Who wrote the first computer program? The first functional computer program was written by Grace Murray Hopper, 1906-1992, an admiral of the U.S. Navy. She wrote a program for the Mark I computer. Developed in 1944, the first fully automatic calculator. During the 1950s Hopper directed the work that developed one of the most widely used computer programming languages, COBOL, common business-oriented language. She is also credited with coining the slang term bug to refer to computer program errors. The story goes that her machine had broken down. And when she looked into the problem, she discovered a dead moth in the computer. As she removed it, she reportedly announced that she was debugging the machine. Hopper served the U.S. Navy for 43 years. From 1943 to 1986, and retired as its most senior officer. She was also a professor at Vassar College and a programmer for the Sperry Rand Corporation from 1959 to 1971. She is one of the pioneers of computer science. The very first computer program written, though never used, was also by a woman. The English Baroness Augusta Ada Byron, the poet Lord Byron's daughter, born 1815, wrote it for Charles Babbage's analytical engine, which was never completed, and so the program was not tested. Who wrote the first computer program? The first functional computer program was written by Grace Murray Hopper, 1906-1992, an admiral of the U.S. Navy. She wrote a program for the Mark I computer. Developed in 1944, the first fully automatic calculator. During the 1950s Hopper directed the work that developed one of the most widely 
used computer programming languages, COBOL, common business-oriented language. She is also credited with coining the slang term bug to refer to computer program errors. The story goes that her machine had broken down. And when she looked into the problem, she discovered a dead moth in the computer. As she removed it, she reportedly announced that she was debugging the machine. Hopper served the U.S. Navy for 43 years. From 1943 to 1986, and retired as its most senior officer. She was also a professor at Vassar College and a programmer for the Sperry Rand. Corporation from 1959 to 1971. She is one of the pioneers of computer science. The very first computer program written, though never used, was also by a woman. The English Baroness Augusta Ada Byron, the poet Lord Byron's daughter, born 1815, wrote it for Charles Babbage's analytical engine. Which was never completed, and so the program was not tested. When was the computer chip developed? The computer chip, or integrated circuit, was developed in the late 1950s by two researchers who were working independently of each other, Jack Kilby, 1923, of Texas Instruments. Who developed his chip in 1958, and by Robert Noyce, 1927 to 1990, of Fairchild Semiconductor, in 1959. The chip is an electronic device made of a very small piece, usually less than one quarter inch square, of silicon wafer, and today has typically hundreds of. Thousands miniature transistors and other circuit components that are interconnected. Since its development in the late 1950s, the number of tiny components a chip can have has steadily risen. Improving computer performance, since the chips perform a computer's control, logic, and memory functions. A computer's microprocessor is a single chip that holds all of the computer's logic and arithmetic. It is responsible for interpreting and executing instructions given by a computer program, software. The microprocessor can be thought of as the brain of the computer's operating system. Many other consumer electronic devices rely on the computer chip as well. Including the microwave, the VCR, and calculators. When was the computer chip developed? The computer chip, or integrated circuit, was developed in the late 1950s by two researchers who were working independently of each other, Jack Kilby, 1923, of Texas Instruments, who developed his chip in 1958, and by Robert Noyce, 1927-1990, of Fairchild Semiconductor, in 1959. The chip is an electronic device made of a very small piece. Usually less than one quarter inch square, of silicon wafer, and today has typically hundreds of thousands miniature transistors and other circuit components that are interconnected. Since its development in the late 1950s, 
the number of tiny components a chip can have has steadily risen. Improving computer performance, since the chips perform a computer's control, logic, and memory functions. A computer's microprocessor is a single chip that holds all of the computer's logic and arithmetic. It is responsible for interpreting and executing instructions given by a computer program, software. The microprocessor can be thought of as the brain of the computer's operating system. Many other consumer electronic devices rely on the computer chip as well. Including the microwave, the VCR, and calculators. Who invented the first personal computer? Development of the personal computer, PC, a microcomputer designed to be used by one person. Was first developed for business use in the early 1970s. Digital Equipment Corporation developed the PDP-8, which was predominantly used in scientific laboratories. The credit for development of a computer for home use goes to Steve Wozniak. 1950 and Steve Jobs 1955 college dropouts who founded Apple computer in 1976 they spent six months working out of a garage developing the crude prototype for Apple I which was bought by some 600 hobbyists who had to know how to wire program and set up the machine its successor, Apple II, was introduced in 1977 as the first fully assembled programmable microcomputer, but it still required customers to use their televisions as screens and to use audio cassettes for data storage. It retailed for just less than $1. 300 that same year Commodore and Tandy introduced affordable personal computers. In 1984 Apple Computer introduced the Macintosh, Mac. Which became the first widely used computer with a graphical user interface, GUI. By this time, International Business Machines, IBM, had introduced its PC, 1981, which quickly overtook the Mac. In spite of the fact that IBM was behind in developing a user-friendly graphical interface. Who invented the first personal computer? Development of the personal computer, PC, a microcomputer designed to be used by one person. Was first developed for business use in the early 1970s. Digital Equipment Corporation developed the PDP-8, which was predominantly used in scientific laboratories. The credit for development of a computer for home use goes to Steve Wozniak. 1950 and Steve Jobs 1955 college dropouts who founded Apple computer in 1976 they spent six months working out of a garage developing the crude prototype for Apple I which was bought by some 600 hobbyists who had to know how to wire program and set up the machine its successor, Apple II, was introduced in 1977 as the first fully assembled programmable microcomputer, but it still required customers to use 
their televisions as screens and to use audio cassettes for data storage. It retailed for just less than one dollar. Three hundred that same year Commodore and Tandy introduced affordable personal computers. In 1984 Apple Computer introduced the Macintosh, Mac. Which became the first widely used computer with a graphical user interface, GUI. By this time, International Business Machines, IBM, had introduced its PC, 1981, which quickly overtook the Mac. In spite of the fact that IBM was behind in developing a user-friendly graphical interface. Why was the Internet invented? The computer network was invented in the late 1960s so that you s Department of Defense researchers could share information with each other and with other researchers. The Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA, developed the Internet, its users, who were mostly scientists and academics, saw the power of the new technology, wires linking computer terminals in a web of networks allow people anywhere in the world to communicate with each other over the computer. Even though it was developed by the government, the Internet is not government-run. The Internet Society, comprised of volunteers, addresses usage and standards issues. The technology caught on, made more accessible by the innovation of the user-friendly World Wide Web. In spring 2005 there were an estimated 888 million Internet users around the world. About 35% of them in Asia, 30% in Europe, and 25% in North America about 200 million of those in the United States. The powerful network had become part of everyday life in the developed world. Why was the Internet invented? The computer network was invented in the late 1960s so that you s Department of Defense researchers could share information with each other and with other researchers. The Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA, developed the Internet, its users, who were mostly scientists and academics, saw the power of the new technology, wires linking computer terminals in a web of networks allow people anywhere in the world to communicate with each other over the computer. Even though it was developed by the government, the Internet is not government-run. The Internet Society, comprised of volunteers, addresses usage and standards issues. The technology caught on, made more accessible by the innovation of the user-friendly World Wide Web. In spring 2005 there were an estimated 888 million Internet users around the world. About 35% of them in Asia, 30% in Europe, and 25% in North America about 200 million of those in the United States. The powerful network had become part of everyday life in the developed world.
How old is the World Wide Web? The web, which adds an ease of use layer to the internet by providing a graphical user interface. GUI, was developed in 1990 by English computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee. 1955, who wrote the web software at the CERN Physics Laboratory near Geneva, Switzerland. Berners-Lee wrote a program defining hypertext markup language, HTML. Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP, and Universal Resource Locators, URLs. The web became part of the Internet in 1991 and has played a major role in the growing popularity of the International Computer Network, making information more accessible to the user via multimedia interfaces which allow the presentation of graphics, formatted text and hyperlinks, photos, and illustrations, as well as streaming or downloadable audio and video. How old is the World Wide Web? The web, which adds an ease of use layer to the internet by providing a graphical user interface. GUI, was developed in 1990 by English computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee. 1955, who wrote the web software at the CERN Physics Laboratory near Geneva, Switzerland. Berners-Lee wrote a program defining hypertext markup language, HTML Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP, and Universal Resource Locators, URLs The web became part of the Internet in 1991 and has played a major role in the growing popularity of the International Computer Network, making information more accessible to the user via multimedia interfaces which allow the presentation of graphics, formatted text and hyperlinks, photos, and illustrations, as well as streaming or downloadable audio and video. When was email invented? Short for electronic mail, email was invented in 1971 by computer engineer Ray Tomlinson, 1941, who developed a communications program for computer users at the Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA. The result was ARPANET, a program that allowed text messages to be sent to any other computer on the local network. ARPANET is now hailed as the Model T of the information superhighway. The technology expanded in the 1970s with the use of modems, which connect computers via telephone lines. Within a decade of its introduction, Email had become widely used as a communications mode in the workplace. In the 1990s usage expanded rapidly to Internet users at home, schools, and elsewhere. Some technology analysts call email the killer app of the Internet. The most powerful tool on the worldwide computer network. When was email invented?
short for electronic mail, email was invented in 1971 by computer engineer Ray Tomlinson, 1941. Who developed a communications program for computer users at the Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA. The result was ARPANET, a program that allowed text messages to be sent to any other computer on the local network. ARPANET is now hailed as the Model T of the information superhighway. The technology expanded in the 1970s with the use of modems, which connect computers via telephone lines. Within a decade of its introduction, email had become widely used as a communications mode in the workplace. In the 1990s usage expanded rapidly to Internet users at home, schools, and elsewhere. Some technology analysts call email the killer app of the Internet. The most powerful tool on the worldwide computer network. When did mobile phones first come into use? Mobile communication dates back to radio phones used in the 1940s and 1950s. They were two-way radio systems that were powered by car batteries and required operator assistance. They were not very reliable, and the phones were anchored to a place, not a person. The first truly mobile phone call, in that it used a portable handset was manufactured on April 3, 1973. The caller was Dr. Martin Cooper of Motorola, who, from the streets of Manhattan, called rival researcher Joel Engel at Bell Laboratories. At NT's research arm, the two companies were in a heated race to develop mobile telephony. The device used by Cooper that day was called the Dynatac. It weighed 2 pounds and had simple dial, talk, and listen features. The first generation of mobile phones began to be widely used in the 1980s. These phones were large by today's standards and were usually installed in a car or briefcase. Transmission was via clusters of base stations, or cellular networks. The next generation of mobile phones appeared in the 1990s. The handset and battery technology improved, allowing for more features in smaller sized phones and greater mobility. These were reliable phones that people could carry with them. As more users adopted the technology, cellular providers expanded transmitting systems in some areas of the world. Usage took off to the point of near universality by 2000. Usage in the United States Though strong, lagged behind the rest of the developed world. Some analysts believed that this was due to relatively high service fees. While others cited a lack of reliability, especially in rural areas. The land-based telephone system in the United States was designed to nine nines of reliability. Meaning it can be counted on to function 99.9999999% of the time. A standard as yet unmet by cellular technology. When did mobile phones first come into use?
mobile communication dates back to radio phones used in the 1940s and 1950s. They were two-way radio systems that were powered by car batteries and required operator assistance. They were not very reliable, and the phones were anchored to a place, not a person. The first truly mobile phone call, in that it used a portable handset, was manufactured on April 3, 1973. The caller was Dr. Martin Cooper of Motorola, who, from the streets of Manhattan, called rival researcher Joel Engel at Bell Laboratories. At NT's research arm, the two companies were in a heated race to develop mobile telephony. The device used by Cooper that day was called the Dynatac. It weighed two pounds and had simple dial, talk, and listen features. The first generation of mobile phones began to be widely used in the 1980s. These phones were large by today's standards and were usually installed in a car or briefcase. Transmission was via clusters of base stations, or cellular networks. The next generation of mobile phones appeared in the 1990s. The handset and battery technology improved, allowing for more features in smaller sized phones and greater mobility. These were reliable phones that people could carry with them. As more users adopted the technology, cellular providers expanded transmitting systems. In some areas of the world, usage took off to the point of near universality by 2000. Usage in the United States Though strong, lagged behind the rest of the developed world. Some analysts believed that this was due to relatively high service fees. While others cited a lack of reliability, especially in rural areas. The land-based telephone system in the United States was designed to nine nines of reliability. Meaning it can be counted on to function 99.9999999% of the time. A standard as yet unmet by cellular technology. When was instant messaging introduced? The ability to send instant text messages over computers was introduced to the public in 1996. Internet service provider America Online, AOL, launched instant messaging. Or IM, as another way for its members to communicate with each other. By logging onto a home or work computer, or cell phone with internet capabilities. Users could view their buddy list and see which of their AOL contacts were online at the time. IM users could then send messages back and forth in real time, next door, or across thousands of miles. In 1997 AOL expanded the service to non-AOL users with a utility called AOL Instant Messaging. AIM and in 1998 the company acquired another IM utility, ICQ. By 1999 MSN and Yahoo rolled out their instant messenger services, and others followed. The concept caught on, particularly with young users who embraced the concept of a private chat room. In 2004 a Pew Internet and American Life Project report estimated that 53 million Americans or 4 out of 10 Internet users, were instant messaging. 
I am had become the primary form of communication for many, replacing telephone calls and emails. The mode of communication also brought about a new shorthand or subculture language, with a heavy reliance on abbreviations and icons. The use of the technology continued to grow rapidly, expanding to practical business use. In 2004 analysts estimated that there were about 600 million registered IM users worldwide. When was instant messaging introduced? The ability to send instant text messages over computers was introduced to the public in 1996. Internet service provider America Online, AOL, launched instant messaging or IM, as another way for its members to communicate with each other. By logging onto a home or work computer, or cell phone with internet capabilities. Users could view their buddy list and see which of their AOL contacts were online at the time. IM users could then send messages back and forth in real time, next door, or across thousands of miles. In 1997 AOL expanded the service to non-AOL users with a utility called AOL Instant Messaging. AIM, and in 1998 the company acquired another IM utility, ICQ. By 1999 MSN and Yahoo rolled out their instant messenger services, and others followed. The concept caught on particularly with young users who embraced the concept of a private chat room. In 2004 a Pew Internet and American Life Project report estimated that 53 million Americans or 4 out of 10 Internet users were instant messaging. IAM had become the primary form of communication for many, replacing telephone calls and emails. The mode of communication also brought about a new shorthand or subculture language, with a heavy reliance on abbreviations and icons. The use of the technology continued to grow rapidly, expanding to practical business use. In 2004 analysts estimated that there were about 600 million registered IM users worldwide. Who wrote the first computer program? The first functional computer program was written by Grace Murray Hopper, 1906-1992, an admiral of the U.S. Navy. She wrote a program for the Mark I computer. Developed in 1944, the first fully automatic calculator. During the 1950s Hopper directed the work that developed one of the most widely used computer programming languages, COBOL, common business-oriented language. She is also credited with coining the slang term bug to refer to computer program errors. The story goes that her machine had broken down. And when she looked into the problem, she discovered a dead moth in the computer. As she removed it, she reportedly announced that she was debugging the machine. Hopper served the U.S. Navy for 43 years. From 1943 to 1986, and retired as its most senior officer.
she was also a professor at Vassar College and a programmer for the Sperry Rand. Corporation from 1959 to 1971. She is one of the pioneers of computer science. The very first computer program written, though never used, was also by a woman. The English Baroness Augusta Ada Byron, the poet Lord Byron's daughter, born 1815, wrote it for Charles Babbage's analytical engine, which was never completed, and so the program was not tested. Who invented the first personal computer? Development of the personal computer, PC, a microcomputer designed to be used by one person. Was first developed for business use in the early 1970s. Digital Equipment Corporation developed the PDP-8, which was predominantly used in scientific laboratories. The credit for development of a computer for home use goes to Steve Wozniak, 1950 and Steve Jobs 1955 college dropouts who founded Apple computer in 1976 they spent six months working out of a garage developing the crude prototype for Apple I which was bought by some 600 hobbyists who had to know how to wire program and set up the machine its successor, Apple II, was introduced in 1977 as the first fully assembled programmable microcomputer, but it still required customers to use their televisions as screens and to use audio cassettes for data storage. It retailed for just less than $1. 300 that same year Commodore and Tandy introduced affordable personal computers. In 1984 Apple Computer introduced the Macintosh, Mac. Which became the first widely used computer with a graphical user interface, GUI. By this time, International Business Machines, IBM, had introduced its PC, 1981, which quickly overtook the Mac. In spite of the fact that IBM was behind in developing a user-friendly graphical interface. When did sailors begin using latitude and longitude to navigate? It was after English inventor John Harrison. 1693 to 1776, presented his ship's chronometer to London's Board of Longitude in 1736. The instrument was accurate to within one tenth of a second per day, 1.3 miles of longitude. Since it was set to the time of zero degrees longitude, Greenwich time. It enabled navigators to fix longitudinal position by determining local time. Even though Harrison's award winning invention was heavy, weighing 65 pounds, complicated, and delicate, it was subsequently improved upon so that it could be used on any seafaring vessel in any weather conditions. What is Plato's theory of forms? The theory, 
or doctrine, of forms, also called the theory of ideas, is Greek philosopher Plato's, c. 428-347 BC, expression of his belief that there are forms that exist outside the material realm and therefore are unchanging they do not come into existence, change, or pass out of existence. It is these ideas that, according to Plato, are the objects or essence of knowledge. Further, he posited that the body, the seat of appetite and passion, which communes with the physical world, rather than the world of ideas or forms, is inferior to the intellect. He believed the physical aspect of human beings to be irrational while the intellect or reason was deemed to be rational. The origins of Plato's theory can be traced to Socrates, c. 470 to 399 BC, who believed that the psyche, inner spirit, has intuitive access to divinely known principles or truths, which he attempted to formulate through his conversations with others. Indeed, the Socratic dialogues, written by Plato, reveal that Socrates was striving to define the exact nature of the traditional Greek moral virtues of piety, temperance, and courage. When was the flush toilet invented? The invention dates to the 1590s and is credited to Sir John Harrington. 1561-1612, hence its nickname, the John. A courtier and godson of England's Queen Elizabeth I, 1533-1603 Harrington installed a flush lavatory in one of the Queen's palaces. Though he was a serious scholar and translator, Harrington was also a rebel who wrote controversial satire, leading to his banishment. His invention of the so-called water closet was not taken seriously in its day. But over the following two centuries various inventors worked to improve it. Ultimately developing the plumbed sanitary toilet, a flush commode that is connected to plumbing and sewers or septic tanks. How old is Taoism? It dates back to the 6th century B. C. When it was founded by Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, C. 550 BC. Master Lao. As he was known, believed in inaction and simplicity. Which he combined with religious practices to form the mystical philosophy of the Tao, Dao, the path of virtuous conduct. Lao Tzu reasoned that since humans face a cloud of unknowability, they ought not to react to things at all, he viewed the world as a pendulum, with the Tao as its hinge. Anyone who struggles against the current of life is like an insect caught at the end of a pendulum swinging back and forth, and suffering with each movement. But by crawling along the hinge, tell, to reach the top, a place of complete stillness is found. Letsu advised that people do away with their desires, avoiding that which is extreme, extravagant, or excessive, and steer clear of any competition. 
Many of these ideas are embodied in a work usually ascribed to him. Tao Te Ching, Classic of the Way of Power However, modern scholars now believe that tome to be the work of his followers. Taoism is still relevant to many today. When it was developed some 26 centuries ago. The philosophy filled a spiritual void that was not addressed by the practical doctrines of traditional Confucianism. One legend has it that Lao Tzu rebuked a young Confucius, 551-479 BC. For his pride. The Tao also contributed greatly to Buddhism, especially in its emphasis on meditation and sudden enlightenment. One of the great thinkers of the Chinese Taoist school was teacher and philosopher Chuangzi. 4th century BC, who constructed a non-political transcendental philosophy that promoted an individual's spiritual freedom. His self-titled work, Zhuangzi, is another classic of Desimes.